Welcome to Great Overload, I'm Anthony and I've been testing the Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite. It has been a lot of fun to test out this new cooler, this Ice Giant Pro Siphon Elite. It's, you know, comparing it to the H100 IV2, it's been really enjoyable to just, you know, sit down, run Prime 95 a lot and just see what both coolers can do and just you know see where one is better maybe one's worse and see how they compare it's been really interesting to me and I have to say I really love new technology on the market it's fun to test and it's fun to try out so a little bit I'll start with the install here go into you know my testing methodology I'll go show you the graphs and then I will end with going through and some of the stuff we talked about and um, with I talked about with Ice Giant maybe there and just my thoughts on this cooler so to start out the install is very quite simple um, they did a, they did a, their videos on it awesome they did a really great job they have a, by the way they do have a 10 year warranty on this as well as they cover most of the sockets what is it um, Intel 1366 all the way up to the 20 um, 2066 and 11 5x and all those sockets so they did a great job there covering their intel sockets they also did amd the thread rippers the what is it T, uh, tr4 s uh, tr4 as well as am4 that's all covered and they did it so they have a great job just getting be able to put this on whatever processor that you want to use then you know the install the video was so self-explanatory i was thinking about doing a video i watched theirs i said well i can't add anything it's no use me even trying so um, they, they just take your computer, put it down on the ground, um, or put it on a flat surface, I should say. Then you put it, the spacers on, you put the metal bracket on top of that, you put the four screws in, tighten those down, then you put your thermal paste on the CPU, and then you put the cooler on top, screw that down, and you attach the two fans. So your graphics card will have to be out to attach the two bottom fans, so you have two on top and two on bottom of the cooler then you're good to go and you can just go through and boot up your computer and start running what's one, one really really nice thing about this that I had put in my notes here is that routing of the wires is um, they have it on the left hand side already on the cooler to the two fans that are already attached and those I was able to connect right up with the fans on the bottom run them through where the, I run the 8 pin for the motherboard and then you connect it I have the there's a there's a Y adapter that they put under the CPU Y adapter around the back and it all fit it was great it kept it nice and clean which I really did like that as well not, not too much extra wires I didn't have to switch anything so if your case is able to do that great if not well uh, you, you might have to switch the fan orientation as well so um, that's pretty simple it's pretty self-explanatory I think for that and let me know if you have any questions or if you have any ideas uh, you know to maybe make it better or hooking it up I'm I'd be more than willing to um, read those thoughts and pass them along so um, with that the testing configuration I did is I have a 1950x in here I have the uh, it's on the MSI X399 gaming pro carbon AC motherboard I got a Vega graphics card in here Vega 64 um, 32 gigs of RAM and quad channel and then um, it's in a Corsair Crystal Series 570X RGB ATX mid tower case. And the two configurations I had for the H100i and the first two sets of the test uh, two exhaust fans on top, one intake fan on the bottom or bottom front. And then for the second two to try to optimize the uh, Pro Siphon Elite cooler, try to get a little bit better um, configuration, I put three fans in front and then no exhaust fans so it's uh, it's very close with the Pro 7 Elite is was about that far between the exhaust fans on top so that's what made me think I should probably move them all to the front because you're basically exhausting anyways where it was at with how this case design is and the one more because that's what made me change it um, on the second run but you'll see all that data um, what I'm using here for the software is Ryzen Master and Overclock. So I did a stock run at just, you know, you plug a CPU in, you boot up your computer, that's stock, right? It does its own boosting, etc. Then I did a 3.7 um, gigahertz 
boost or you know, your boost an overclock and I just set it at 3.7 done it's uh, was basically with prime 95 it was running at 260 watts um, and then I'm using hardware monitor to monitor everything prime 95 to run a the small test their small torture test to get the maximum heat is what they say so that's what I used um, and my, used maximum power <laughs> which for a week of running this I'm pretty sure that I, I did quite a good job of using a lot of power and, and generating a lot of heat um, and I'm using the IQ software for the Corsair H100 IV2 as well as I'm using the Dragon Center to monitor all the system fans they had the exact same fan curve every single run and then the Dragon Center also uh, set the CPU fans as well for the ISO uh, or the ISO giant Pro Siphon Elite. So that's my setup there. I think I captured everything um, as well. This case is it's, it's a nice case. I like the case a lot. It's tempered glass on four sides um, with gaps so that air can be pulled through on all the sides. Um, one thing though is that glass has you know <laughs> it's solid there's no like a huge amount of mesh in front so it's actually coming in on the sides and then going through and the room is 22 degrees C the entire time so throughout all the testing it stayed 22 degrees Celsius I have a thermometer sitting on the desk to monitor it the entire time and um, each run was 30 minutes for prime 95 I was heat soaked after roughly about 15 to 20 minutes and I let it run to, for um, the full 30 each time maybe a little bit longer but then I took the max temps and um, I did monitor you know the noise the CPU speed beginning end uh, you know I monitored the like with the cooler liquid I monitored that and I'll mention those but the CPU speeds between the Pro Siphon Elite and, uh, and the H100 IV2 identical um, which was which made a lot of this easier I did run I, I so I said I said ran prime 95 in small I ran those three times I also ran it in blend mode I will not give you the blend mode details because I don't find them really interesting it's just it, you, you take the exact same graphs you just shift the temperatures down a little bit okay you get what the blend one was I don't see the point um, there but um, going through I'm just, I'm just going through all my stuff okay yes I did I did everything so um, I will also show you some videos here as well in a little bit on how I had it all set up here as well before we get in the graphs but I do want to say the idle temps so the idle temps for the H100 IV2 um, this is just booting up let it sit for a little bit and seeing what it idles at at stock um, CPU fully whatever the computer you know you install a CPU whatever 30 degrees Celsius for 3.7 gigahertz 32 degrees Celsius idle temp for the um, Pro Siphon Elite. Now this is in the same configuration uh, as the H100 IV2 just without the H100 IV2 in the system which is one intake fan at the bottom front and two exhaust fans. That was 43 degrees Celsius on both the stock and overclock. Then as soon as I put all three fans in front no exhaust fans that temperature dropped by um, to 41 degrees Celsius. So two degrees Celsius it dropped. Here. So now I'll go through and I'll show you the um, a couple different videos here. There's going to be I might talk in them a little bit. Hopefully you, it, it all caught my voice. But I'll be showing you some of the fan setup and how loud they are, and just so you guys get a little um, bit on that or experience that a little bit before we jump into the numbers. This is sounds on max 2700 RPM. Here's the sound coming down. So this is how I have it set up. I have the ice giant cooler set up there with all the fans going upward. Um, and then we have, as you can see in the colors there, the two fans exhausting up on top. And then there's one intake, intake fan down here at the bottom. And before the H100i V2 was mounted right here, so I kept the fans in the same spot for this test 
and um, I'm just testing it straight up like that so there's not really anything besides a switch of a cooler in this test I moved the fans to the front as you can see so all three are in the front that's the front intake and then this because it's so close up there the exhaust right straight up um, if I ever get six fans I will add two on the top and then one on the side and retest and compare but this is the setup for the last two items where I got a few degrees uh, or a couple degrees Celsius cooler temperatures and it's basically then taking all the um, cool air room temperature air in and then putting it up so so getting back to this let's jump into the numbers here and we have this is going to be the max temp in Celsius at the stock frequency of the CPU um, at and it's going to be about pulling 180 watts and the room temperature is 22 degrees Celsius so you can see here for the H100 IV, IV, H100 IV2 quiet that's going to be 63 degrees that fan noise to start so when I say fan noise start that is basically you start the test and you go look at the fans see where they're at and that's going to be 1200 RPMs for um, the start of this one and then it maxes out at 2700 RPMs bumping and but it goes back and forth between 27 and then down to 1800 as soon as the cooler liquid goes above 40 C that's where it kicks up and then once it's underneath it kicks back down so it kind of cycles it's trying to be quiet the entire time as soon as you uh, jump into the H100 IV2 um, balance so that's setting the fans to balance it does the exact same thing except 1700 RPMs is going to be your start, start for your fan and then it's going to go up to 2700 RPMs and then drop down to 2100 and just cycle back and forth there as well when you go to extreme then that is you can see you get 3 degrees better right there uh, and it's reputable but the fans are going to be running at starting at 1900 RPMs and then it's going to sit at 2400 RPMs just it yeah it it makes some noise it it does a good job of that however one thing that you get is you know you get the best temps on this graph um, as well as you also when as soon as you stop running within uh, five to ten seconds that your temperatures drop down to 39 degrees Celsius and the reason why it's dropping so quickly or 30 yeah 39 degrees Celsius and that drops so quickly because that's the temperature of the liquid so as soon as you stop putting the load on there with that liquid pumping through in all of these it just drops the temperature pretty quickly then once we jump over the pro siphon elite um, stock stock is you know the stock fan curve max is 100% fans so you can see there with that configuration you're in 66 degrees which is more than the other cooler right that's three degrees warmer then you go to the max and then it drops back down to 61 degrees so having the fans on max on the cooler just um, just helps a lot now the case fans throughout this entire thing are stuck at the exact same fan curves the entire time. I did not change them, did not mess with them, did not care. So um, I just wanted to basically see the difference between, hey, let's take the stock fan curve of the um, stock fans in the cooler and versus if I had them at 100%. Now, if you jump over and put the fans in the front, the Pro Siphon Elite, um, is now 64 degrees so it's only a degree difference between the H100i V2 on quiet versus not and um, versus the Pro Siphon Elite and the Pro Siphon Elite Max you're down to 60 degrees it's matching that extreme so this is 180 watts um, and the fans on here once you go to max um, is going to be um, 2200 RPM so they're a little bit they don't spin up as fast but I think that they're a lot quieter even at like a 2100 RPM versus a 2200 RPM I personally hear them as quieter I wish I had a de decibel uh, meter to be able to actually hear them you know get that you know sound rating for you um, but that's not one thing I have yet but I would like to now when you click on idle 
uh, or as soon as you stop the test and go to idle on these Pro Second Elites, they are um, on this test in the 50 degrees. So 50, um, let, let me just get it here. Both of them are, so if you have fans on a fan curve, it's 52 degrees. And then if you have the fans at 100%, it goes down to 43 degrees so you get about a nine degrees difference there eight nine degrees that is just that much difference within five to ten seconds it takes a little bit longer to bring this cooler down um, now granted you're not you know the H100 IV2 is bringing in that cool air right off the desk right it's front mounted so it's taking the room air at 20 degrees C and just bringing it through the cooler which is going to have an advantage right um, not many cases, uh, as I was talking to the ice giant, they said not many cases are really designed for this cooler yet. And they're, they're right. I'm sure that there's a more optimal way to get this to go through. And, um, I can only hope there's some cases out there that take advantage of it. Then let's jump over to the max temps in Celsius at 3.7 gigahertz with an overclock. CPU is pulling 260 watts and a room temperature 22 degrees. And as you see here, your H1R V2 and it's basically stuck and pegged at 2700 RPMs constant because it's trying to keep the below you're having a liquid temp of 44 degrees Celsius and um, in that cooler and it turns out to be a max temp of 81 degrees Celsius the balance is a degree better um, which is you know fans are still at 2700 RPMs um, the, the liquid temp of this one though is slightly better uh, is like a slight degree better now both of these still drop to your 39C right away once you stop it it's just the liquid temperature comes down quite quickly with that cool air, or cooler air coming in the room temperature air now when you go in extreme even though it's still 2700 RPMs the whole time it's 2700 RPMs basically from start to finish and that really um, keeps it under load or keeps it under pretty cool all the time and that was 77 degrees Celsius so um, these are all repeatable from what I was able to do which made this really interesting and then this is the really cool part you take a look at this graph and you're looking at the ProSafin Elite stock and ProSafin Elite Max and you're going well 77 degrees now the fan curve the reason why they're the same here is the fan curve is maxing out and you're getting that is what I contributed to I don't get why the cooler wasn't that same way but um, with the leap maybe it's just you know pushing more air through in the beginning and kept it cooler longer but um, you you look at this and you say well I threw more wattage at it I'd expect it to go up and be off and still be behind a little bit in those scenarios and this is, I mean, these first two, the Pro 7 Elite, that's with the um, two exhaust fans on top and only one intake fan in the front bottom. So, yeah, wow, that's uh, that's pretty good on both. And then when you jump in to putting the three fans in front, you're at 75 degrees C. So I think, though, what the threat would still say is that you shouldn't go over, like, 68 or something. 75, you know, get, is getting you back down there at 3.7 where... Is pretty impressive getting close to what AMD wants, but still, what's well, I guess 70 degrees C off of what AMD wanted. I think it's 68 degrees C is what AMD wants at this cooler. So, just going through this one quick there, it, you know, idle temperatures get right back down again, you know, for the um, Pro Cycle Elite on these 450 um, C. Right there on the fan curve, if you go max, it drops quicker, gets you down into the 40s pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, I, I've been really impressed with this cooler overall. Um, getting back to it, the let's talk a little bit about what we talked about. And um, you can go back and pause the video if you want to take a look at any of these. Post a comment if you want to, um, if you need some more information hopefully I didn't miss anything there's a lot I have a huge Excel table I've been looking at and trying to go through but um, the the wattage you know was 180 260 so you have 80 more watts between each test 
this cooler can take more. One thing that they said was more, um, basically you put, you try to get more power out of your CPU, right? You want to run fast or whatever else. You put more load on it, the better it runs. So the higher the heat, the better. And it, it kind of backs that up, right? In the data I showed you, we put more on it and it didn't grow the temperature by the expectation I had at least. Um, because I, you know, with the H100i, I've had a lot of experience installed. I have a lot of the uh, liquid IIOs, and as you put more heat on, you can basically expect it to go up. You don't expect it to, you know, come back and not go up as much, right? So that that was impressive for me. Um, you can you can think about this here is that you know this is their first generation product as well. You might want to probably can expect some things in the future from them especially if people buy this product it's going to be an interesting I think it's going to be an interesting product that people are going to want to put in their systems and build around yeah I could see them doing something with RGB on these things um, heck if Corsair ever wanted to take and if, uh, if Corsair ever got a hold of and say hey I want to license this product you can only imagine what RGB things they would do with it um, uh, you know it's, I like it black right now. It looks good in the case. Um, I actually, I actually want to kind of, you know, there's kind of hint of green in my case, green and red. Um, I like green, so that's why it's green. And but I would like to see like a little glow underneath it where it's lit up underneath. That'd be kind of cool. But there's there's a lot of different things that you could get for this. You know, hopefully um, people take notice to this type of cooler and say, hey, I want to support it and grow with it, and they can stay in the market. I think that this is overall a nice interesting product right for you can see in the settings that there's some things that you may like the h100 I, or the AIO for better right simple um, but there's some things that you might want to like this uh, pro Lee as well better it's going to depend upon your scenario if you're going to throw a lot at it and you have good cooling I, like I said I like to get um, maybe I didn't mention this I like to get more fans to be able to test this out to have three intake fans, two exhaust fans on top, and one exhaust fan out the rear, and see how it competes with just three intake fans and the other data I already have. Now I'm gonna need more fans for that. I don't have more fans I can really use for this at all. I just, I, I have other obligations and I haven't bought fans for this computer. So hopefully I will get more fans for it and I'll be able to test that out as well. And if I do, get all those in I will definitely put a video on it even if it takes me way too long to get I definitely will do that um, the configuration of cases maybe I'll do a video on that like what I would see like to see out of a case but I like to see a chimney style so bottom to top flow um, you probably lift up the case a little bit you know adjust you know even if you put a taller case up shorter make it a chimney style there's there's different ways to do it you've even seen Nvidia with their new fancy designs their graphics cards where the air comes up and flows, you know, up through the graphics card basically because they have that V shape in the PCB that can continue to go up. Then with this cooler, you keep pulling that hot air out and go right straight to the top of the case. There's some really kind of maybe cool designs taking power supply mounted in the front, you know, and then having the fans in the bottom pull the air up. There's so many different opportunities that we have here to create a different case. And since I believe cases are kind of a you, you know, kind of a P or I just say building computers kind of like a piece of art to us. It used to be I build a computer and, a, and I have a case over here that's just beige and it got the job done. It game for me. And now that I've gotten older, uh, you know, it's like, okay, it's on my desk. I want to have something like that's also good to look at, you know, that I put, you know, I put a lot of effort into it. I put a uh, kind of like a masterpiece and I bet you you see all these cases that do a way better job than I do at building them and putting them together and they just look amazing and I go you know those are those are done beautifully well and this could be a product that they you know put in there and you could build something around and make a case look really good um, I, I'm even thinking if they put this in white um, it'd be really cool to have a white case um, what is it like the, what's a new um, Leon Lee the white case or whatever that um, that was that just or that they're thinking about coming out with that would look amazing in there do a, a white uh you know snow white case with the cooler like this that'd be fun um with white fans i do have another test that i will probably do for this as well just to tr try it out i think it would be kind of cool 
and um, let me know what you guys maybe want to be tested with this as well I can kind of throw at it try to um, use it now this is my you know this does all my video rendering this is my daily computer does everything so I'm gonna stick with this cooler in here I'm very impressed with it I'm probably gonna overclock this system maybe a little bit more too and um, with the uh, H100 IV2 I'll probably put that in a different system um, or and give it away to somebody um, I got or build it, it I, I own my cousin a computer so it might go on um, there I so we'll, we'll see and uh, but I was still going to use H100i. It's a great cooler overall. Very impressed with it. And it's it's up to you. I, I gave you the data. I, I'm impressed with both coolers. I'm not going to... I like both of them. That's just the way it is. I, lo I love new technology. And I think that's one of the best things about this. Um, what do they call it? Two-phase um, technology here. Is that it's a something new. And we can take it and kind of use it and make it even better. The... You know, they did a good job putting in some nice Arctic fans, and they they did, I have to say that they, it took them a little bit longer to get this all shipped out, and it's been, uh, last year was a strange year to get everything, you know, orderly shipped, and they did a good job, and they, they, they gave their, you know, founding members a nice shirt, which I appreciate, and I I'm, I'm, might come back with this and uh, see what I actually like with it after a year or so of just using it every single day and see how it holds up I mean that's that's gonna be the true test to me is if I use this every single day how's it gonna hold up um, yeah granted I only have one of these I've tested um, gosh probably about 50 H100 IV2s over um, or just Corsair AIOs and so I kinda know you know certain things that might break with them or whatever else but this is a new product, so I'm, I'm excited to see how it operates, how it holds up over time. And hopefully this gives you some data that you can go through and make a good decision of what you want and what you kind of want in your computer. And maybe gives you another design choice that you have that you're trying to design your computer to do, so, you know, to look a certain way or to cool a certain way. And this gives you another opportunity to achieve that as well. So ice ice giant you guys did a great job on this product good good job bringing it out to market um, keep up the good work and I hope that we can uh, I, I hope that I can actually work, see some of your other products here um, down the road and uh, test them out because I think it's gonna be fun um, hopefully other people are inspired to other companies to bring out other products to the market and keep innovating in the space because cooling is a is a thing that we're all gonna want to have uh, and it's gonna be you know we want our parts to run faster and more efficient well okay we want our parts to run faster sometimes efficiency we'll, we'll, we'll take we'll take the speed before um, so we want them to run cool but um, yeah be sure and I'm excited to see what else they come out with as well and hopefully you guys give them ideas of what you want to see as well so with that let me know what you guys think. Let me know if I missed something in the comments below or questions that you have about this. I'm pretty sure I got everything, but I could have missed something here as well. I want to thank you guys for watching. Thank you for taking the time to help support this channel and help it grow. I really appreciate it. Until next time, God bless, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.